How's it going guys? Welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. What's new in Reaper 6.14? This is kind of a smaller update, but there's lots of little things that I think make this a great update and we're gonna check those out today. And before we get started, I wanna let you know about the sale that's going on for the uh, Reaper blog courses. You can learn about video editing in Reaper as well as mixing through the uh, Mixing and Reaper volumes one, two, and three courses. Everything is discounted by 50% if you use the code stay home. And this is valid until the end of September. So the first thing we're gonna look at is a update for the arrange view, allow showing both or neither of item volume handle or knob. So I'm just gonna put in an empty item here. And my defaults are to have a volume knob, uh, or in this case, a velocity knob on the item. So if we go into the preferences for appearance and media, we now have a new option here for a volume knob. This used to be in this dropdown list and now we have no handle. So if I hit apply, that volume knob disappears and we can go back to the default setting for Reaper, which is uh, plus zero dB is at the top of the item, hit apply. And so when you hover your mouse over right there, you get a velocity or a volume handle on audio items. And if we switch this to uh, plus zero dB is center of item and apply that, now we've got this line in the middle and a new item will have a middle line for volume. My preference and what I always recommend people to set up is to enable the volume knob. And in this case, after this update, sending this to no handle. So there's just this little kind of volume knob that's not in the way, it's just with the other media item icons. But of course, this update now enables that option to be completely removed. You can now have it so that uh, you don't accidentally grab the, the top handle for changing the volume, things like that. Some people requested that as an option. Back in the preferences, we've got a new option, allowed disabling default fade in, fade out lengths for imported media items. So that's under Preferences, Project, Media Item Defaults. And it's this little checkbox here, do not set fade in, fade out for imported items. And so this is independent of the automatic fade in, fade out for recorded items. And so I'm going to just check that so that if I import an, a media item, it never gets the fades on it. And in my case, if I record an item, it's not gonna put the fades on it because that's how I like it. But the default is to have fades on and, and you just have the choice. If we head over to preferences, audio, MIDI devices, we have this new option to force control messages from different devices to different channels. So we go into one of the devices uh, on your inputs and you can enable input for control messages. That's not new, but what is new is this option for source channel or any of the 16 MIDI channels. So this will give you the option of having your keyboard on whatever MIDI channel that you're performing on, and then all of the controllers, knobs, faders, things like that can be assigned to a different MIDI channel so that it always controls plugins or transport controls and things like that. So that's a pretty neat option. I think that that's going to be pretty helpful going forward for setting up a template and, and your hardware and software working together very well. Up next, FX update parameter display in TCP MCP when changed by plugin from audio thread. So I'm hoping that I'm going to demonstrate this correctly. Um, I'm not 100% sure I couldn't get anyone to test. I didn't wanna install an old version to compare, but I believe that that means that if you use the audio control signal to move a plugin and that plugin uh, parameter is actually shown in the control panel area, then that's going to move and, and give you that feedback. Let's try it. Uh, I'm just gonna insert a click source here so there's a little bit of a, an audio signal here. So it sounds like this. I'm gonna add in an effect. So let's just put in, I don't know, let's put in an EQ and let's say that um, this frequency, uh, yeah, the frequency is going to move with the parameter. So I'm gonna first show it in track control so we net, see it there on the side. And then I'm also going to do parameter modulation MIDI link. And I'm going to use the audio control signal. And 
uh, let's put it back to the default and put it centered. Uh, yeah. And then we're going to turn the attack down, change the input to one and two. And so if I play this, So we can see that it's moving in the plugin. If I close all of these windows, parameter knob in the track control panel area is moving along with it. So there we go. I'm fairly sure that's what that changelog thing means. But again, I didn't install the old version. I don't remember it not displaying feedback like that before, but I don't know. It just seems kind of interesting and I wanted to share that one. The region marker manager has added take marker support. And there's also a preference to list markers, regions, and take markers grouped together. I'm just going to put in a take marker here in this item. So right click, take menu, take markers, add or edit take marker. Just put in one there. Control drag to copy one. I'll edit it. Okay. I'll put in a couple project markers. And put in some regions here as well. OK. So let's open up the Region Marker Manager from the View menu. So now we have a toggle for showing the take markers. So that shows and hides. If we right click anywhere, we've got options. So if we have this option, list markers, regions, and take markers separately, if we have that off, then if we sort things by name, it's going to be kind of random. It's take marker, then a, a project marker, then a region. You know, these are all kind of out of order, but just checking that box in the options will keep them organized by type. So even if the numbers are different, even if the names are different, it's going to keep them kind of organized. So yeah, just a little update. Um, take markers were added um, a few months ago, and uh, they were never made it into the region marker manager. But it makes sense to do that. The mixer also got a bunch of really small but very helpful updates. Uh, I think this is where all the cool stuff is in this update. Let's check it out. So up first, we've got mixer add option to group effects parameters with effects. So I'm going to go to the master mixer and right click it so that I can get my options. And I'm going to enable show effects parameters when size permits and check that. So the parameter is now showing there, the one that I linked earlier in the video. And that's where it's always been. But this new checkbox here, group effects parameters with their inserts is the new one. And it's awesome because it puts that parameter right beside the plugin that it belongs to, which I think is a very cool uh, very helpful thing. If you hadn't used that function before um, to have the parameter controls on the track panels, um, I think it's going to be more of a reason to use it now. So let's add in another plugin here, and I'll just add in Recomp. So I'm just going to move the parameter, go to the Param menu, Show and Track Controls. And so I've got the threshold immediately after Recomp in the list. And let's say we also adjust the attack and show that one in track controls. And so we can adjust that plugin without opening up the plugin window. As before, we can double click it to open it up. Um, but unlike before, uh, with this option group effects parameters with their inserts, it's not in a separate section and where it was a little hard to tell what that parameter actually controlled, especially if there's a lot of plugins in the list. So I'm just going to show that again, and then I'm going to copy these plugins. And so I've got a bunch more plugins here now. Theme, use scroll bars instead of scroll buttons for effects, sends, and effects parameters. If there is a, a need to scroll or the, it, it's not showing everything, there's now a scroll bar and you can scroll through the track controls and the inserts or the, the sends section instead of having previous like uh, little arrows. Now you can just scroll over it and um, or grab the scroll bar right there and uh, and see everything. So we, if our mixer is very short and these start getting cut off, we can scroll through here 
So that's another nice little change there. So I got to this point in the video editing and I realized that there was something I left off the list. I tested it earlier in the day and I must have thought that I covered it while recording. And so yeah, we're gonna punch this in. What I wanna show you is Mixer option to group sends with before after effects. So that means pre-fader sends and post-fader sends when we've got that combined view with the per parameters and the effects inserts. Uh, we can also do that with sends. So let's enable that in the mixer. So we're gonna right click somewhere on the master mixer and we're gonna enable group sends with before after effects inserts. And so now let's check this out. We've got, I've got uh, track one sending to track two and this is a post fader send. So it is at the end of the effects chain. Technically it's after this fader, but still having it at the top at the end of the chain makes sense. Let's change this send to a pre-fader, uh, actually a pre-effect send. And so that's gonna pop that up to the top of the chain. And I think that makes a lot more sense for people. So I'm just gonna remove all the sends. First, I'll make a post-fader send um, from track one to track two. And then I'll make a pre-effect send to from track one to track three. And so that send goes up to the top of the mixer and the, the post fader send will be at the bottom. So yeah, that's a pretty cool update. We've kind of removed all those different sections of the mixer and kind of combined them, um, grouped everything together. So we've got sends, then effects, and then the parameters for the effect, and then the post fader. You know, I can drag anywhere and create a send. Uh, if I drag a plugin, it copies the plugin. So that was the option group sends with before after effects inserts. Track panels support movable divider between effects parameters and embedded effects. One of the main features that was added with Reaper 6 was the ability to add certain plugins directly into the, the UI of the track control panels and the mixer control panels. The way you do that is to right click on the plugin from the effects chain and then show embedded UI in TCP. And so right here you can see that there is recomp. So what I'm gonna show you here is that if we make this a little bit bigger, there's actually a little divider. So, so you can see the mouse change there. If we grab here, we can add in more effects parameters and I'll show you later on that there's also things like sends and effects available in this uh, this UI as well in the TCP. But I'd like to just show you with, um, with re-EQ as well, you can em embed that in the track as well. And so, yeah, if your track is wide enough, let me just close the mixer for now. If your track is wide enough, there is this option of adjusting these plugins, um, the, the, the columns between the parameters and the effects. Next up, track panels optionally show effects and sends in track panels. Now this is a function that I was looking for in the track control panel context menu, in the options menu, in the track menu. I could only find it in the action list. We're gonna search for show sends and this option show sends in TCP when size permits. We're gonna run that. So I believe that's on now. Yep, that's on. And we'll just have to make a new track. Let's make two tracks and we'll send um, from that track into this track and from the first track into the third track. And now we've got sends in the track control panel. And let's also do show, show effects TCP, show effects inserts in TCP when size permits. Now this is something that people have been asking for a very long time. Um, I don't think it's done exactly how people were expecting, you know, making it exactly like Pro Tools um, with their their columns of effects. I think it's still done in a in a Reaper way. But yeah, we've got the plugin parameters in there and we've got the plugin listed there on the side even without the effects chain. Let me just hide these plugin parameters. So I think most people will probably do something like this where they've got 
plugins listed in the TCP and they've got their sends listed in TCP, they may not be using the plugin parameters uh, or have a need for that. And again, this is something where it's, it's going to depend on how big the plugin or the, um, the width of the TCP is, things like that. I don't really know what this looks like when you have a lot of different plugins in here. Yeah, it doesn't really keep it in separate columns. It's just going to kind of always fill the last slot. Maybe that will be changed in the future, but uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting that those things are now available. And once again, you have to go to the action list to um, enable these. You might wanna save these options into one of the menus. So uh, I'll just do that real quick with the menu editor. And I'm gonna go to the track control panel context and I'll just hit add, action, and in here, show effects inserts in TCP. I'll hit select once, and then I'll also go to uh, show send TCP. And I'll enable that and close the window, hit save. And now if I right click on my track control panel area, I've got these two new options that just added options, show sends in TCP and show effects inserts in TCP. And so easy for me to toggle those on and off as I need them. And the last thing for this video is actually a very simple one. So when we go to the routing button on a track and we go to the track channels dropdown menu, this has been updated a little bit so that every uh, stereo pair from two to 64 is now in the list. I think it went up to like 32 and then it jumped to 48 and then 64. Mm -hmm. So now you can choose the precise number that you want in that list. So there you go, that's what's new in Reaper 6.14. Lots of cool stuff with the uh, mixer control panel and the track control panels, all those new options. If you make a theme, you might wanna check uh, in this update because there are some new um, image files that you might wanna customize for your custom theme um, to make it completely customized and compatible with these new features. So that's it, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.